Please, would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be like water and sunlight for the truth that you have planted in our souls. Amen. So Julie did a fabulous job reading those familiar words from the Gospels. And uh, the one thing I would want to note, though, is it's not very good baking advice. Now, I don't pride myself on being a great baker. I know some of those in our congregation are fabulous bakers, but I do know a thing or two. And I was taught that when you scoop out the flour, you're supposed to use a knife with a flat edge and, you know, scrape off the rest so that you've got the measure full. But don't you dare start tapping it around to make it settle so that you can pack more in. Oh, I learned that right at the beginning. If you're measuring out the butter and you're putting it into a, you know, a container type thing, don't squash in as much butter as you can. If you're measuring out the chocolate chips, avoid that inclination to want to squash in more and more and more. Right? Although you can never go wrong with chocolate chips, right? I mean, come on. But, you know, there's this principle. But Jesus is saying, ah, ah. The measure with which you give is the measure with which you will receive. So pack it in there. Pack it in good and proper. Shove in as much as you can to whatever cup you have been given to give. Make sure you get as much goodness in there as you can so that what you give will be an abundant measure and therefore you will receive in abundance. These last five weeks, we've been looking at a sermon series, Wisdom for a Weary World, Wisdom for a Weary World. So today is our final in that series, and I have some wisdom. This one is my favorite proverb. You can't climb the same hill twice. You can't climb the same hill twice. Well, now, hold on a moment, Pastor Nanette. We've been sledding on that big hill at Goodyear Heights or Goodyear Park or whatever it is, right? We've been there a couple of times because it won't stop snowing. Right? Or maybe every summer we've hiked this particular hill or mountain. Right? We've been there so many times. We've been there in the fall. We've been there in the spring. We've been there in the summer. Pastor Nanette, we've climbed that same hill many, many times. Yeah? Which hills have you climbed? Have you climbed any mountains? I'll admit, I'm a great hiker. I drove my car twice up Mount Washington. You can even get a bumper sticker at the top. It says, this car climbed Mount Washington. Now, don't, don't judge me too harshly. It is an arduous climb. You actually have to train to walk Mount Washington, and it's quite dangerous if you get caught in bad weather. The weather is different at the top than at the bottom. In fact, year-round, they have an observatory, a weather observatory up at the top, and there's a camera feed so that you can go on even now and see how arctic it is at the top of Mount Washington. There are some cute photos, too, from the community of weather folk who stay up there for periods of time, and there's one of the cats that they have up at the top of the mountain that I, I hope is not too feral, but one of the photos is of the cat with little um, icicles on its whiskers and the tufts of its ears. It gets so frigid and cold up on the top of Mount Washington. So I was not quite that brave as to hike the whole of the mountain, but I have driven up twice. Are there mountains or hills or favorite places that you've hiked? If you're online, please put in the comments what you've hiked, and if you're here in the room, call out. What mountains or hills have you walked or hiked? Mount Mercy. Marcy. Where is that? Oh, tallest mountain in the Adirondacks. That must be beautiful. Yeah. Any others? Ride your boat, uh, bike over the Alleghenies. I've driven through. That's, that's quite something to ride your bike through. Was it on the road or was it off-road? On the road. Nice. 
Who else has hiked a mountain, walked a mountain? I can see this is a very, very, very athletic lot here this morning. Please put something in the comments for you folk on YouTube. It is not just me, Bobby, and the two people who responded in the room here, I'll have you know. There are quite a few folk who are sitting with many teeth in their mouth, and maybe they just don't want to say, or maybe we just don't have a hiking crowd, right? But you know what it is to hike to the top of a mountain, I hope, or drive. Perhaps you've seen that scenic view. Now, why is it that you can't hike the same hill twice? Why is it that you can't climb the same mountain twice? Because even if you go again, right, the season is different, the weather is maybe different, the leaves that were there in the springtime, small, and that bright green that we long for right now, have withered and golden reds and oranges died if you're walking in the wintertime. And the next summer, if you hike again at the same time, there are different leaves on a different tree. If it's been a few years since you went last, the bark on the trees has shifted and is different. The water in a stream or a river is not even the same water or, or the same rocks have probably shifted and moved. The fish and the birds might be different. They're older, they're different. The saplings have grown. Maybe you find a tree that is in the same place, but it looks different. The mountain or the hill itself is a different place when you hike it again. You can never hike or walk the same hill twice. You've got to imagine that everything around us is different. The welcome that Bobby offered earlier will never come again. The call to worship that we did this morning, we hope that next Sunday you'll be here for the call to worship, for the welcome that'll happen. But they'll never happen exactly the same way again. You'll never be sitting in exactly the same place. You'll never be exactly the same person. The moments as they go leave us. We only have this present moment. And next time we visit this place, we'll be different people. While we hope that everything here will remain the same and while it is a beautiful and constant reminder of the certainty and the sureness of our faith in God, this place too changes and shifts. Everything around us changes. All we have is this present moment. So the wisdom for today is to seize this day, this moment, carpe diem, to seize this day, this moment, this time that we're hiking the hill, this mountain that we have to climb in front of us, this opportunity that this dawn presented to us, while we pray for the blessing of many more to come, all that we have right now is the here and the now. Have you ever written a bucket list? Who's written a bucket list? Yeah? Some over there? Oh, good, good, okay. So we've got a bucket list group with us today, maybe not a hiking group, but we have a bucket list group. Excellent, excellent. That's a plan of what you want to do before you kick the bucket. It's kind of metaphorically dark, if you like, but a bucket list is a list of the things you want to do before you die. And don't we always assume when we write that list that that death is far off? I don't mean to get morbid on us, but how do we know that? How do we know that? All we have is today. How many times when we've written that bucket list, and if you've achieved things on it, more power to you, good. But how often do we say, oh, you know, I wish we could take that trip, but now's not a good time or I wish we could make that visit, or I wish I, you know, I miss that person, but oh, I don't have time for a phone call right now, because you know, they get chatty, and once they get going, they don't stop. So I'll, I'll phone later, I'll check in later, I'll take that trip next summer. I long for that time, but next time, next time. We assume we have that future, and while it is good to plan, while it is good to make those medium and long-term plans, all we have, friends, 
is today. All we have is today. So let's squash it in there, whatever measure we've been given. Let's get it all packed in. Let's seize the day, because today is a good day to do good. Today is a good day to do good. Amen? In verse 31 of our reading today, Jesus says, Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Be the master of your own ship. Seize the day. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Don't just waft through this life and let the stream or the current take you where it will, but hold that tiller. Turn that rudder. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Because the measure that we give is the measure that we will get. So do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And if you were with us a good many weeks ago, you would have heard me quote this, and I'm going to use it again from Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who passed away just recently. He said, do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. In other words, we don't have to try and do it all or be it all. We just have to seize the day that is before us and do the little bit of good that we can do where we are. And all of those little bits of good combined are what will overwhelm the world. They are the tide that will surge in, bringing God's goodness and grace, bringing God's blessings. So let's pack it all in. Let's pack it all in and seize this day, this opportunity. One more proverb, because I can't help myself with this wisdom stuff before we wrap up. A South African proverb, and don't you also like the early service laugh at my pronunciation. Okay, here we go. Not everyone who chased the zebra caught it, but he who caught the zebra chased it. Did you get it? Right. Seize the day if you hope to catch the zebra, okay? You can have that one. Seize the day. And sure, yes, we may not be the one each and every day to catch the zebra. But if we ever hope to catch the zebra, we better be ready to chase. We better be ready to seize the day, to pack it all in there. For this is a good day, friends to do good. Amen? Amen.